Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the mathematics of big O. And uh, I want to introduce two new terms. We already know this term here, like uh, O of n or something like that. We're going to introduce two terms. One is going to be big omega, and then the other one's going to be big theta, like that. OK, so we want to talk about these. Now, getting back to big O for a second, uh, we have n. This is how fast our data set is growing, the input data we're going to use to run our algorithm. And here is some variation of time. Now, normally we talk about time, we talk about units being like seconds or hours or whatever it is. Here it's just some kind of generic time thing that we're going to compare algorithms to. But it's not really so much like seconds or milliseconds or anything like that. It's more of a generic term here. OK? All right. So uh, if we have two functions here, let's say one that goes like this, right? And then the other one goes like this. In this case, can we say that the, uh, the uh, red function is big O of the black function? This red function is big O of the black function. Because there exists some constant right here. Right? We'll call it n sub 0, or the rest of the world will call it n naught. After which, the black function bounds the red function from the top. You see that, right? So after this point, the red function is always either below, and it's also allowed to touch, by the way. It's also allowed to touch. But it has to be, it can't go past the other one. And you can see that here. So let's take an example of one that would be like that. Um, uh, f of uh, n is equal to 3n squared. And let's say further that I claim that this is going to be that... Um, that f of n is going to be big O of g of n. And here, I'm going to say that g of n is going to be n squared. And we want to show that, indeed, this function is big O of this function. Now, in order to do this, we're going to need two things. We're going to need a constant. And we're going to also need a multiplier here like this. So let me show you. So here is going to be initially our n square function. And over here is going to be our 3n square function, which is like this. And initially, it might seem like this is on the wrong side of this graph. But we are allowed to multiply this function by a constant in order to get this above here. And my question is, does such a constant exist where if we multiply this function n squared by something, it would then either be touching or to the left of this function after a certain point. What do you think? Yes, sir. Here it's obvious that the multiplier here would be 3. In fact, if we chose 3, it would be right on top of this function. Would, could we use a bigger constant than 3? Could we use like 5? Yeah, we could do that, right? Because then it would be like out here somewhere. And in terms of the constant here that we're picking, what should, we, what should we pick here? What would be the lowest number we could pick here and this still be true? Yes, sir? I'm talking about this, this n value. What's the lowest point? So let's say, let's say I set this up and I chose this constant k1 here, uh, k1n squared, and I took Ben's advice and I, I set it to 3. So now I have 3n squared here, and I, I have this other thing, 3n squared over here. And I want to show that this thing is always going to be greater than or equal to. And I want to know, at what point will this be true? What's the smallest value of n where this will be true? Yes, sir? Um, zero. Zero. So you can see that it, for this one, it's like zero. But you can pick any constant you want here. And you can also pick any constant you want to bring the curve back this way. Now, this is what big O looks like. If this is still confusing you, when we do some problems, it'll become clearer. We're going to introduce another topic now called big omega. And to understand how a big omega is different from big O, let me make a few comments about big O. Big O is usually analyzing the worst case scenario for an algorithm. Not always. We'll be doing some big O of average case later in the year. But right now, we'll just assume that big O is mostly about worst case. Okay? And big O is going to be <coughs> the worst case of the algorithm. What are the 
two things that we care about as computer scientists for an algorithm. The two things that we care about. Yes, sir? Time and space. Time and space. So we care about how fast an algorithm is and how much memory it uses. Which does Big O analyze? Both. Now, so far, I've only talked about time, and for an extended period, we'll only discuss time. But as the course progresses, you'll see that Big O can be extremely useful in analyzing memory, memory usage also. Okay? But just to keep things simple, I'm going to just assume uh, that we're going to discuss the time element only initially. Okay? So Big O is useful in analyzing both time and space, and it's usually the worst case scenario. So what does big omega represent? This represents the best case scenario. So let's look at what that looks like. So let's say we have an algorithm that looks like this. Right, this is our algorithm. And let's say that we have some function over here. And that's going to be our big O limit for this function. You can see it's worst case. Worst case means as n grows, this thing never gets worse than this. See that, right? This is time again, and this is n. And now, if we had a best case function, it might look something like this. Now you say, well, there are all these violations. Do we care about these violations? No. We only care that at some constant here, I'll call this n1, past this point, the blue line stays below the red line. See that? And some other constant here, where above which, no, that's right where the green line is always on top of the red function. See that, right? So here you can see that the red, the red graph is going to be big O of the red, uh, the, the green graph is going to be big O of the, of the red graph, and the blue one is going to be big omega. You see that, right? Notice that these two constants don't have to be the same. And um, so, so now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about one more, and that's going to be called big theta like that, and that one is uh, where we can create some function like this, right? And we want a single function that can bound it on the top and the bottom by just changing the constants. So let me give you a little example, and I'm asking the question is, is this function big theta of n squared? Question. Can I find two different constants that I can put in front of this, which will, one will bound the function above and one will bound the function below? Is that possible? It is. Mr. Scholson, what, what constant could I use, sir, so that it would either be touching or above this function? And I know I could use two, but give me a different one. Uh, you could use three. Okay, so we could have one that would be here, so we could say it would be 3n squared. And what function could I have used to bound this? from below. I could use n squared. So you can see in some cases, right, in some cases I can get a function that can be used to bound it from above and below just by changing the constant. And if that situation occurs, we say that we have a big theta. You're looking at this thinking, well, that's all well and good, but how is any of this at all useful? And it's surprisingly useful when you're looking at two functions and you're not really sure if one is the big of the other. So let me start off by reviewing some basic ones with you. Let's say I have a function like this, and I want to know a uh, nice simple big O for this function here. So that's true. I want one of the standard ones, sir. So let me write some of the standard ones down for you. These are just, I haven't put a complete list on the board, these are just some, just some standard ones. Sir, do you think you could pick from one of these? But the, and the mathematician would definitely say that n cubed, uh, this function is definitely big O of n cubed. But can you give me a simpler one, sir? Because if I was to plot this function, right, uh, probably, uh, I don't know, it's 0, it's 7, and then, uh, I don't know, something like that, right? And then you say, well, what about this n square? And it's going to be like here. But remember, I'm allowed to multiply it by a constant in order to get it above this number. And the question is, does such a constant exist that can get this thing above here past a certain point? Yes. There, there is, right? Um, and so we can see that this is going to be a uh, big O of n squared. Okay, let's try another one. 
What would be the big O of this one? What do you think? Mr. Ajoji, what do you think would be a big O of that function? It would be this one because this, is gonna, this term is going to dominate this term as n gets larger. How would we describe mathematically what, what kind of term is this and what kind of term is this? What kind of term is this, first of all? That's a square, it's a polynomial term, right? It's a square term. How about this term? What is it? NP, but what is it explicitly? Exponential. See that? So the exponential is going to grow faster than the polynomial. So we're going to say that this thing, that this is going to be the dominant term, so that this f of n is big O of 2 to the n. Okay, that hopefully is like a little review of what you should already know. And now I'm going to go into a little bit more of the math with you here today. Let's look at this one. And the question is, is this big O of that? That is the question. Now, I would like you to discuss this with your partner for a few minutes. I'm going to show you that it is big O of 2n. And I'm going to show it to you using some simple math based on this constants that we talked about before. And that is why those constants formulas are so useful. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this function. I'm going to rewrite this function. And I'm going to rewrite it. Can anyone guess how I'm going to rewrite it? Yes, sir. OK. See that, right? And my, I'm still asking the question, is this big O of 2 to the n? That's the question. Is it possible for me to multiply this function by a constant so that it's always greater than or equal to this function? Yes, it is. What's the smallest constant I could use, sir, that would qualify? 2. You see that, right? So now you can see that it is possible. All I have to do is multiply this by some constant, k1, right? to the n, and here I can just pick k1 is equal to 2, right? So now I can get the two functions to be the same. Could I pick a number bigger than 2? Could I put like 7 here? I could, right? And then you can see that this is going to be big O of that. So therefore, this is big O of 2 to the n. Let's try another one. And my question is, is this big O of 3 to the n? Now, you probably have a strong opinion of this, but I would like you to actually try to do some math. OK, we're going to see using math whether this is big o, of, uh, big o of 3 to the n or not. I'm going to rewrite this function. Can anyone guess how I'm going to rewrite it? Yes, sir. Right. I'm going to rewrite it like this, 3 to the n square. So now my next question is, does a constant exist where I can put k1 3 to the n, where this, this function will always be bigger than this function. Does such a constant exist where k1 3 to the n is always going to be greater than or equal to 3 to the n squared? Can I make a number k1 big enough to have that happen? No. So therefore, it is not big O of 3 to the n. Now, I have only scratched the surface of big O. I've only taught you enough so that we can get through data structures. You can see that the math for this can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. And chances are, when you get to college, it'll be a little bit more challenging math than even this. But I've given you the foundation now that you need to get through. That is called the average case. Very good, sir. That is, the big theta is called the average case. 